right, guys. Finally got one in. This is the Quantum Maverick Quantum 2, version 2 Flux. This truck is getting a lot of a lot of, you know, good good reviews and stuff like that about it being real tough and it's definitely a bang for the buck truck. And you know me, it's all about doing this on a budget. And of course I grabbed this and got a couple of extras. You know, we'll talk about, I'll just show you before we get ready, we're gonna put them in. The, uh, this is the metal motor mount housing. And I went on and grabbed the metal spur gear. I'm hoping that, you know, if I change the electronics in this thing, that the rest of the gears will hold. You know, having a metal spur gear option says that your diff gears should be tough. But I did see a video where somebody broke a couple of teeth off of a diff gear, but it was on a bad crash. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. All right, so now that we got this guy on the bench, let's take a closer look and see what this thing has to offer. We're gonna pop the hood. Body's nice. I don't know if you can see that with my camera, but you see that metal flake paint? I think that's nice, nice little addition to this paint job. Traxxas blew it out the water with the graphics. Got everybody going with these crazy graphics now. But hey, it looks nice to me. I like it. Probably gonna throw some duct tape on that. Set that down. Move up on this machine. And as we pan up and down this machine, it looks really nice. Yeah, I got my adapter on here. It's the XT60 normal plug XT60 but I got my adapter on there because I'm obviously going to plug this thing up and we're going to check out some other things the electronics how they function I know there's a nice cool function as far as the the light kit on this thing spinning around on the on the stand here and just really take a nice look at this thing man it is nice. It is nice, guys. It is nice. Things are neatly tucked away. Ever so neatly. It's got a little clip for your wires here. Right here. So everything is guided. The lights and everything is guided nicely. Keep things neat and out of the way. This thing has a slipper clutch. It's not a, it's not a differential. A lot of guys are going with the differential. A lot of different companies. Lalo, team associated the time of this video. This thing runs 274 before taxes at A Main Hobby. And A Main Hobby has all the parts for this. So it's got up, they got upgrades as well as standard parts for this. And um, I'll share the link for A Main Hobby if you're not familiar with that company as a new hobbyist. So, anyway. We're going to grab out a battery here and um, get this thing a little test on the electronics and stuff like that. While I'm talking about that, before I get that battery, let's just look at the batteries. I threw my batteries in here already, but this is the way the battery bay is set up. And that's four double A's. You know, you can only see two, but it's a four double A set up, you know, so the batteries go up into the handle. So, yeah, you got... Um, 14 millimeter aluminum hexes in this. I'm not gonna take the tire off and show you that. Take my word for it. 14 millimeter aluminum hexes with eight millimeter hex nuts on here. So you're gonna need an eight millimeter socket to take those off. The bodies, the, the shock bodies are plastic, but they are threaded, but they have metal caps on the bottom and metal caps on the top and metal adjustment uh, collar on it, all that's aluminum. It's 3S capable. It's the Fox system. I will try to look down in there and show you, but I might be able to get it from this little angle here. It's a 3660 
3500 kV motor. I don't know if you guys can see that from the angle that I'm that I'm showing you at. But right there you can see it says 3500 kV. I'm working with the hat cam so I can't tell if it's focusing or not. All right guys, I'm just going to run it on this Z Power 5200 milliamp 3S LiPo. I'm not one of those guys that every time I get a new RC, I buy a new battery. I was turning into that guy. But after you get so many batteries, you start saying, well, let me get some adapters or just change my connectors. Because you got to use these things. They can sit around and get old, you know. And you got a battery for every car and you don't run every car. You don't need a, you don't need a ton of batteries, you know. That'll save you some money, save you some space. Let's turn the car on. First, we'll turn the transmitter on. Let me not forget that. It's this button here. You hear a little beep and the red light comes on. You know you're on. And the lights come on immediately. There's no sound. It doesn't count. This ESC is not programmable. So it doesn't even count the, uh, the, the cells in the LiPo that you're putting in. You don't hear any of that with this. And the fan... There's a fan on here. It's very quiet. Some people like quiet fans. Me personally, I like a loud fan. I like that jet engine sound. I like to hear, because if you hear the fan, in my opinion, you know it's blowing a lot of air. Don't hear a loud fan, you're probably not getting a whole lot of air. You're getting some, you know, but that's just me. Some people don't like that loud fan, but okay. To each his own, right? It's going to gun it one time. It's on 3S. Clearly, she's got some good power in that 3500 kV motor. Just want to cover the fact that this light on the back of here, when you hit it in braking motion, you see it lights up. That's one of the things that kind of made me get this is I, I like lights on my RCs and I like them to have some functionality. No, there's no left and right turn signal and all of that kind of thing. But the servo is quick, man. This is quick. That steering servo is very quick. They say that's one of the high points. I watched a few reviews myself before I pulled the trigger on this thing. I was trying to make a decision because I need something small that's durable that I can let my, 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 my grandsons run. I can let my nephews run from what I've seen. It's pretty safe to hand over to somebody and say, okay, go ahead on and do your thing and you will be safe. And the lights do toggle off and on. I just want to say that this button right here toggles the lights off, toggles the lights on, off, on to your right is off to your left is on and it's got like three clicks so i don't really know what that third click is because it goes off on the on the first click to the right click it's off and then there's that one click doesn't come right on let's see if it's just like this and i hit the brake will it will it ah the brake light is still on there you go well, that explains it. It turns the brake light on and you can still see it breaking. But if all the way, and it turns them both off. So that that first click turns on the brake light. The full click to the left turns on the brake and the headlight. So you can have one light or the other on. That's, that's cool. I didn't know about that. I didn't see anybody cover that in any of the reviews that I saw. But that's cool to know. We're going to leave the lights off for now. We're going to turn this thing off. I just made a mistake. Never turn your radio off before you turn your car off, guys. You could end up with a runaway. I remember in the days of AM radio, that was definitely a no-no. It was going, it's taking off. But with all the protections the RCs have for runaway and all of that kind of stuff now, you really don't have to worry about that. So I'm I'm glad this obviously has that that protection. So you don't have to worry about a runaway. And as you can see, the battery fits the bay real good. It's not 
it's not too big for it or anything. That's the front and end of the battery. So I actually got a little space to, to slide back and forth. So you can, because of this strap, you know, you can be versatile with your batteries. You're not stuck with, with a proprietary battery, you know. And at this price point, man, I, I can't tell you what it was with tax. But, you know, somewhere, somewhere in the area of, I think it was like 20 bucks taxes. So just under $300, I guess, you know, with taxes. But it's the least expensive thing because everything else is not an actual one ten scale. This is a true one ten scale. I got my one ten scale. I'm gonna just compare it to my Rustler because my Rustler is a true one ten scale. So we're gonna compare it. And I just said it was true one ten scale. And I would say. Wheel to wheel, hub to hub. The rustler might be slightly, slightly longer. I think it falls in that in that range though, one ten scale. I think it falls in that range. I really do. If you don't agree with me, let me know. But anyway, I'm gonna put this back. Yeah, I gotta get my couple of my other cars out and run them. I haven't ran in a, in a minute. But anyway, we're dealing with this now. So it's it's a legit 110 scale. Some some cars do not fall at actual 110 scale. I guess I could compare it to my Stampede for the sake of argument, just so we can see if or how it compares to another four by four model. Now the Stampede is kind of a beast, man. So yeah, yeah, it's sitting on top of those shock towers. So we'll say Stampede is just slightly longer, not much, but slightly longer, but it was elongated, you know, to match up with the Hawks, the Stampede. So it's just slightly longer, but as far as it goes, you're standing 110 scale. This is where it is. And I think they said the wheelbase on this is 11 inches from here to here, like 11 inches. I got a ruler. I might as well break out my ruler. And there you have it, guys. 11 inches. Absolutely. Right spot on, 11 inches. And this is 14 inches. So, <laughs> 12. Okay. And we'll hold it here and see if we got two more inches. Yeah, there you go. 14 inches. So they're not wrong. It's wider than it is long. So that should help a lot as far as turning stability. It's going to make it a stunt truck, man. This is this is a, like a 110 scale outcast type setup, man. You know, if you're going to compare it to something. I would call it an outcast type setup. So, you know, this thing is very nice. And we're going to find out, you know, down the line, because we're going to change this ESC. We're going to, we're going to change it. We're going to change it. We're just going to change it. It just is what it is. That's what's going to happen. We're going to change the ESC, guys, because I need something programmable. I want to be able to change my punch and all of that kind of thing. So, we're looking at some ESC options, but we're gonna run it like this for a while. And then we'll find out if the lights still work when you change the ESC. I'm thinking it's in the in the uh, receiver anyway. That's a good place to put a function like that in the receiver, but it could be in the ESC. We just don't know. So we'll find out. Um, that could affect whether or not I actually change it. So that's the unboxing and the first quick look at this. Oh yeah, let me just, you know, we want to talk about it. It's got all hex hex hardware on the bottom. It's got that Maverick logo engraved in there. It's not a decal. It's not paint. It's engraved into the chassis. Maybe you can tell that by that angle. And it's very nice. So, like I said, that's it for this unboxing and quick review of this. The 
Maverick MT. Let's put the body back on here. MT Quantum 2 Flux. That is the review. You know, Maverick is a division of HPI. You can see HPI taking a credit for this right there. And yeah, I think this is gonna be a, a nice, nice uh, addition to my collection. It's all about getting the best bang for your buck, finding the most inexpensive thing that you can get into the hobby with that you can enjoy and have good power support. I don't knock the Amazon models because they're tough. I got a couple of them. I haven't had to replace any parts on them, but I don't run them as much as I run stuff this size though. So there's that, you know, but I've given them to my, my, my nephews and my grandsons and just let them do what they want to do with it. And I've had no problems. I haven't had to go and replace any parts, but obviously, We've talked about this. If you send any RC high enough, fast enough, far enough, <laughs> there's only so much tensile strength these parts have. There's just only so much. You know, we, we, we keep pushing the envelope and they keep rising to the test and we keep pushing the envelope you know, and they keep rising to the test. So it is what it is. Somebody's going to figure out how to break one of these. Like they figure out how to break everything. We break all RCs, and I'm not going to ramble about that. But I appreciate you guys tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's free. Share, comment. All comments are welcome. Good, bad. Try to maintain some calm on the ugly comments. Try not to just cuss me out. I appreciate that. You know what I mean? Because... I'm trying to keep my channel, you know, on a, on a friendly level. I'm not I'm not looking for a debate on or or, or getting to deal with all of the Rick and Maroon. I, I'll I'll listen to your comments. Don't get me wrong, but I ain't looking to get into an argument about what somebody else's choice is. Cause these are this is about choice. You you get what you choose. You like what you like. You know, and I ain't mad at you. So don't get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is TKS Hobby. You know my motto. You ain't crashing. You ain't bashing. You guys be safe. Stay cool. And be blessed. TKS Hobby out. Peace.